<laughs> Fuck off, okay? I've got small hands. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Theo. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast. Coming at you again from Scotland. Scotland! I Freedom! Did, I did that last time. And I hate you both so much right now. Understood. <laughs> um, so... We were going to lead in with something. So last time we talked about sort of Scotland versus Canada and the the fun and delight of flying. But we forgot to mention that this flight was when we knew we'd finally made it as podcasters. Mm -hmm. Huck, could you get the celebrity podcaster gift, please? Like, I'm actually scared. So so (laughs) Theo doesn't know anything about this. Uh, He didn't know that this existed. Um, If you are listening... It is a bag. Huck, please make the bag make a sound. For all of, you hear that? For all those ASMR people out there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's some real ASMR there. I'm getting, I can I, feel it. Sort of. yeah. that's, that's great. I'm sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when we were on, we, we hopped a flight from tr- Toronto to Chicago, and uh, I was I was in the queue for the, the bathroom at the back, and I'm talking to one of the flight attendants, and he's... He was a super cool guy. This guy had the most, like, I don't usually refer to things as, like, having swag, but this guy had so much style in class. Like, just watching the safety briefing. Oh, my God. And the 100% hand, chill. And the hand motions that this guy had. My God, was he smooth. Yeah. And so I'm chatting with him. He's like, oh, where, where, where are you headed? And I'm like, oh, we're headed to Scotland. And and, and uh, me and my co-host are going there. So your co-host. I'm like, yeah. Um, we had we had a fan come and visit us from Scotland last year, and we're heading over to visit him. Uh, so, so it's a podcast journey, and he's like, wow, that's really cool. Well, tell me about your podcast. So I told him about the podcast, and then I went to the bathroom. And I, but later later in the flight, he comes he comes past my seat, and uh, and he, he sort of comes by, and he and he and he, he stops for a minute, and he goes back, and he go and comes up, and he grabs this bag, and he just hands it to me. He's like, have a really good time in Scotland, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> And I open it up. What is in here? And it's full of zesty ranch snack mix. <laughs> oh my god! From the airplane, like it's full. There's like there's like five of them in here. All the, what? No one else got this special airline gift. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a gift for being celebrity podcasters. <laughs> it is probably the best. Please the, stop playing with it on the microphone though, because it's gonna irritate was, everyone was, who's was, listening. Trying to read what it said. It it's is Zesty Ranch. It was probably the best result of me inadvertent lie. I, I actually did say this. Um, I was eating him, the the the, the nuts and and pretzel pieces. And Jim's like, "How do you like them?" And I said, "These fucking things are the bomb." And Jim goes, "Maybe we shouldn't say that on the let's, plane. Let's not use the b word. Let's uh, let's refrain." From and, using the B word. And we had joked in the airport quietly, like, yeah, we shouldn't say that kind of deal. And on the plane, I wasn't, I <laughs> was not thinking. And I said that. And he's like, yeah, yeah just maybe tone it down a little bit. So, and and uh, that guy, the the flight attendant had come by at some point, not during that <laughs> moment, but at some point, and I, and I was like, these things are amazing. So, yeah. It, <laughs> it, was, it was great that we So now that. they're going to be on our rider whenever we make an appearance. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to track these things down for the next time you come. So uh, that's that's sort of our jam. Yeah. Um, so icebreaker, you had proposed an icebreaker theory that was really interesting for us. Yeah, um, it's not so much going to be sort of preconceptions broken, but obviously from having spoken to me before, you had some idea of what to expect when you came to Scotland. But I kind of was interested in something you noticed, you found out that you didn't expect, and any sort of idea might be a thing. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh, so. Again, this wasn't a preconception. I didn't think that Scotland um, was burning all the coal. Um, <laughs> we but, well. but in the four days as of filming that we've been here, I have been blown away at the energy conservation efforts that they have imposed. Not imposed, it sounds bad, but that they have embraced as, as a country. Mm. Um because I mean, conservation is a big thing uh, in Ontario. The they're legislating stricter emission standards on companies, um, emission standards that, as a person who works closely with industry, I know that they're kind of like they're looking for loopholes because the standards that are being forced on them are not easily achievable without great innovations in technology. So they're looking at ways at prolonging when they come into full compliance. Um, so I know that in Ontario we're trying, but we're not doing so well. But here you, you get here and 
Like, it's just amazing the little things that that are going on. So, I mean, like, there's obviously the hydroelectric, and you said you had nuclear, right? We have a little bit of nuclear, like one nuclear station left. Yeah. It's mostly hydroelectric, and then the big wind turbines you see everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and now bio. They're, they're, they're doing mm-hmm. uh, biomass. Um, all of, or seemingly all of the wall plugs for electronics all have individual switches that control the power to them, so... Um, instead of unplugging stuff, all you have to do is flick the switch and you, you cut power. So that, that cuts down on phantom power uh, being drawn into the system. Mm-hmm. Um, new meters have been installed in the the houses to allow you to see whether or not you are increasing your demand at, at any given point. And it also tracks how much money you've um, spent in energy for the day. Um, what else has been there? Um, Packaging laws? Oh, yeah. the or- <laughs> When I was looking at Oreos, I'm like, why are the Oreos in these tubes? And Ted was saying, well, we have very, very strict um, packaging laws that you're not allowed to have unnecessary packaging and waste. Because you think about an Oreo, like it's in a box container and you have three sleeves, uh, but it's, it's a lot of unnecessary plastic um, and it takes up a lot of unnecessary shelf space. Uh, whereas here, it's just it's just a, a tube of cookies, and it makes so much sense when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's probably things that I'm not even aware of that, or maybe Ted, there might even be things that you're not aware of that are just built in there. I don't know. Is there anything that I'm missing that like we should? Well, like, like I was saying, like the houses, like the council have provided us with four different bins, so we have to recycle mm-hmm. everything at at the house. You don't even just have to like we don't send it to the the dump and then they reserve it we recycle it at the house Mm -hmm. and it's a rotating thing like the idea is like your your landfill bin only gets emptied once a month so basically don't fill that that's the smallest bin it's like don't fill that thing up or Mm you're stuck because you're going to put stuff and things like you'll see now a lot of lorries go around as well um we started doing this thing with fryer oil like you're having the chip shop for cooking chips yep they will provide you with fryer oil they will come back and take it when it's used and then they convert it into biodiesel for their trucks wow so you'll see trucks on the road and you'll just smell cooked chips (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, God, like, this one's awful. And like we've got, um, I know in Dundee, especially got big sort of big city near us. Um, there's charging points for electric cars, and the councils are starting to use electric cars mm. for their staff going between for meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, because I mean, electric cars have a range of what 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, or, like on a full charge. Yeah, and that'll get you pretty much anywhere in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was the thing that I was most blown away by in terms of uh, what I did not expect from Scotland. How about you, Jim? So, I am pretty much a Scotland expert. <laughs> I, I have seen Braveheart many times. I will deck you with this kind of iron brew. And so, one might say that I know basically everything there is to know about Scotland. However, um, thing, a thing that I learned that they did not show in Braveheart, presumably because the movie was already very long, is... Um, Typically in Scotland, in lots of areas, you don't live you you don't live on a street per se. Uh, you live on a court, and that's you know sort of a driveway with five or so houses on it, and it it sort of dead ends at the end. So the only re- reason you would come down a court is if you were you live there or you're visiting, and you just sort of. It creates this different community atmosphere, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, I grew I mean, I've grown up on some pretty small streets, but even that, you've got 20 houses, you know, on, like, on either side of the street. They're, and that's, I mean, admittedly, that's in a city, but here, five houses. Like, you can get to know five houses worth of people, and you're sort of incentivized to do that. I mean, I will admit, I live in a condo, and I don't know... My five neighbors. I have zero desire to know them, in fact. But, I mean, with a house where you're going to have that for, you know, what, 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, your kids are going to grow up there. Like, you're incentivized to get to know the people around you. And having a court, I think, sort of gives you your, your own private space to do that. And it also... Like gives you the an, an interesting opportunity to, to do that. Now, admittedly, in Scotland, you don't get a lot of snow, right? Which Not means really. nobody has to argue about who's going to shovel the oh, damn corn. Oh, no. <laughs> See, what happened was um, the last time we had snow here, it was enough to shovel. 
my dad brought a mini digger home and scooped it up. Well, <laughs> not everyone's dad can do that. Yeah, but that was basically, like, we just sort of turned to my dad and he went, yeah, I'm going to do it. Hang on a minute. Let me get some watchers on and went away and got it. And that wasn't done. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we generally don't have enough snow for, to worry about that. Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting. And I, and I think that's, that's that's part of how it's shaped is, is uh, we have courts in Canada, but it's sort of a little round dead end oh, of the street. Oh, cul de uh, Kind of, yeah. 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 Um, but... Part of that, I think, is is that for the purposes of things like snow removal, like the city has to come through, and remove that snow. Like you're you're not responsible. You're pl- you're responsible for shoveling your sidewalk. Yeah. You are not responsible for plowing your street. Oh, like if, if it is snowing, like there's enough snow to lie. Like we, our street doesn't get done by the council. They do the street at the end of the road. Yeah. But they don't do ours. We do that ourselves. Hmm. Neat. Yeah, yeah cause in Canada, if you had to, you know. Shovel your own street. You'd hate your neighbors a bunch, of them, <laughs> I think. But I'm not sure. But it seems like a really interesting system. Like as somebody who does not who does not want to get to know their neighbors, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I I'm still really intrigued when people do. It works out super useful to. as well. Like when my parents go away on holiday and I'm home alone, and I forget to put their bins out for recycling. Like Gordy next door come and do it for me because he knows I've forgotten. <laughs> it works out super useful. I won't get shouted at for that. Yeah, minutes. and I mean, you you live in a in a place ideally, I guess, with people who are your friends or people yeah. who, are at the very least, you acknowledge that you were stuck with living next to <laughs> until such a time as either they move away or their house burns down <laughs> mysteriously. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, our actual topic for today is sort of the perspectives on things and stuff that we have done and met in Scotland. Um, people, places, and food, because we have been eating food because we are mortal beings mm-hmm. who consume nutrients. Um, but people, so Ted, you have introduced us to essentially everyone we know in Scotland. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Because I think before that, the only person you really knew in Scotland was me. Well, yes. And that is why yeah. you have introduced us to everyone. Yeah. Um, so we have hung out with your friends. Who are super cool. Yep. And we are going we are going to continue that trend, I believe. Yes. Uh, as of tomorrow morning. Yep. And we have met a whole bunch of your family. Yes. Because that's a me. thing in Scotland. So I have a very small family. Yeah. So Huck, maybe you can speak to this a bit better. Mm-hmm. But um and also Canada is very large. Mm-hmm. So I mean if I were going to drive and bring a traveler to visit my family, I mean I would have to drive six hours. Mm-hmm. But Having somebody like meet a whole bunch of your family because they're doing stuff and you just go to that s- stuff when they're when you're traveling seems abnormal <laughs> to me from a Canadian perspective. Is that accurate? I mean, you have, like you have a I think a, t- a more tightly knit family than mine, and I think they're a little closer together. Uh, yeah, and even then, I wouldn't say I've really brought a lot of. Um... I haven't really brought a lot of uh, friends around, so to speak, like with my grandparents, maybe one, uh, I've brought one of my friends with me and that was only because we were moving like a dresser to their place. Mm -hmm. And so he happened to tag along. To be fair, we only met uh, Theo's grand because she threatened to cut him out of the will. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's like my, my grand loves meeting my, my my grand met with my bunch of my uni friends as well. She likes new people and. I was like, she's like, I said, I said, you guys come over. She's like, I, I would like to meet your friend. Really I, like, nice. I will admit that I think that there's, especially now that we have this bag of zesty nacho or, or zesty ranch <laughs> snacks, I think that there's a sense in which you might be showing us off a bit as we are Clearly, world famous. That is exactly what I've been doing and not yeah. at all just because it happens to be involved in what we've, we've planned to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, um, I, there is a there is a certain element that it's more convenient here in Scotland, just because everybody that we've met, we haven't had to travel further than an this hour. Oh, yeah. so tiny. I mean, yeah. I, I have nine first cousins. Seven of them live within like an hour and a half of my house. Yeah, because I mean, we've met most. So what? Only two members of the family. You've met, met outside of the city itself, like your gran- grandma in Edinburgh. Yeah. And then your aunt, I believe it was, at the the pub? My, my aunt and uncle actually lived two streets up that way. They just happened to be Oh, the pub but we that happened night. to meet them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they so actually so lived two streets that so way. So then there we go. Everybody that we've met has, has been within the city. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I think part of it is, is that, I don't know, families tend to stay closer together. Yeah. It's a small it's a small country. Everything's yeah. everything's much closer together here. We, we commented on that last time. It's still true. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you drive for an hour and you get somewhere else. Whereas if in Ontario, you drive for an hour, you get literally nowhere. (laughs) Or Brampton, which is literally nowhere. Yeah. For me, uh, an hour will take me three quarters of the way to my parents. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. An hour will get me farther away from my family, but not closer to anything. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But, and, and... We've also met a bunch of sort of uh, random people, like, like not just, you know, wait staff and things like that. Uh, a couple nights ago, we went to a folk music night. Uh, I'm going to try and get some videos from the next one that we go to. We have a couple we can... Because, um, yeah, Huck's well. got some videos. I think they're up on your Instagram. Uh, we'll put them in the show notes. Yeah, there's only, I think there's only one that got saved. Everything else went to Snapchat, so after 24 right. hours, they're gone. Well, they're still on your phone, so yeah. we'll figure it out. We'll put them, we'll put them in the show notes. Um... It was really cool. I was I was super nervous before I got in there. It's just like a folk music jam group. Although nobody told me it was folk music. I did. I told did you. you? Yeah, I told you. I, my I knew aunt... that. I knew that your aunt and uncle are folk musicians. Yes, yeah. I was like, it's but their jam session. I, I didn't know it was their jam session. So I come, I come into this pub and there's a whole <coughs> bunch of people and they're all in their like you know anywhere from their fifties their sev- to their seventies, and uh, they're they're playing fiddles and and mandolins and accordions and guitars and i'm like oh and they're also playing them basically vastly better than me for the most part and i'm like okay i was sort of the board of guitar and i sat down and i played along and it was a really good crowd it was a really super fun time they periodically would just command a song from canada and i would I, I managed to deliver up a couple, although nothing that was actually <laughs> Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, I did uh, a Mark Cohn song, and I did um, an, Ed an Ed Sheeran song. tune. Uh, next time, next time, real Canadian music. I promise. Yeah. Um, we'll sing the song of my people. <laughs> is that song gonna be Celine Dion? Is it? Because uh, you will get kicked out. Uh, listen, <laughs> I don't get to choose the song of my people. My people choose that. Yeah, no, like, this happens quite a lot. My aunt and uncle, they have a band themselves, but because of that community they're in, we get invited to have again to gigs in halls which are about half the size of the bar we're sitting in right now <laughs> and have about 50 people in them. And it's just a good, it's always a good time. Always a good time. It's funny because I know that that community also exists in my hometown. Yeah. I'm just not really part of it. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, we I'm, su- I'm a super recluse. I have a mandatory extrovert policy for yeah. traveling. Like, like my aunt Eleanor, um, she played violin at school years and years ago and mm-hmm. then she gave up for a long time because she just done bands she just didn't have time for her work and stuff Yeah. and she met Bob her current partner and Bob if you put an instrument in front of Bob it'll take him about 10 minutes to work out to play if he doesn't know he's a before. wizard yeah yeah um, Yeah. I've been here and here we had a Kelly night thing in here before and I was he was yelling chords at me yelling rhythms at Natasha on the drums playing the accordion and singing the song to the bar all at the same time yeah He's a ridiculous human being. Uh, the th- the thing that got me was when he put down his accordion. Well, he was he was calling chords to both me and his brother. Yes, yeah, Stuart. Yep. Um, w- which we both operate at completely different skill levels because I think his brother is just starting Start to, to learn. learn. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was interesting. But and he in the middle of a song puts down his accordion and pulls out a steel guitar and a slide and starts playing steel guitar. Mm. While still calling chords <laughs> and singing the song, yeah, Bob, was, Bob was, was a musical wizard. It was uniquely impressive. It was, um, it was quite impressive. Uh, I declined to play. Uh, I made up the excuse that I'm only just starting to figure out chords. Uh, <laughs> but once I start, saw Jim playing, and once I saw Bob calling everything, I was kind of kicking myself for not putting myself out there a little bit because it was very much, uh, yeah, I. I I know I well almost all the chords that I heard him call out I, I knew how to play uh, and then there's a couple that I looked up like the B chord B, hmm. the B major chord yeah. um, that or I might have stumbled on some of the minor chords but beyond that it wouldn't have been too challenging for me to it's, at least it's folk songs like they're all pretty regular they all travel yeah. in patterns yeah and everybody was 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 really sort of cool and forgiving I remember the moment when I saw somebody stop playing in the middle of a song. Which there's like twelve people around a table, mm-hmm. uh, so nobody no, really notices or cares when you stop playing. You're not doing a performance for somebody or anything like that, and they just stop playing and grab a sip of their pint. And I'm like, all right, I understand the kind of space this is now, and I feel very much more comfortable. Yeah, I, I got it. told off for him not taking my euphonium with me, but my euphonium is a baby tuba, and I would have drowned everyone out. So I got given a percussive. You just egg. Put you at the back of the bar. I, I got given a percussive egg. Yes, I was playing my egg shakers. Egg. egg shakers are great. Don't let anyone tell you that yeah. egg shakers. Oh no! I was having a great time with the egg shaker. Mm-hmm. I was I was very happy at the table with the egg shaker. So I mean, we've met some really cool people in Scotland. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting more. We watched a bunch of Scottish TV with uh, your friends Cat and Sally. Yeah, who were amazing. 
Yeah, uh-huh. we, we, yeah, because you guys just got in on Thursday morning, but they were leaving on Friday for like the entire rest of your holiday. So it was mm-hmm. like, we need to meet for lunch, and you're like, okay. We watched yeah. real Scottish television, like, yeah, like authoritative Scottish sitcoms, like the kind that had to be closed captioned because even the Brits couldn't understand it. Yeah, <laughs> when they when they, they put them down in England, they complained to the BBC that they couldn't understand what was on the television. So the next week they had subtitles. I feel like that's the equivalent of Americans needing blue lights around the puck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so places, I mean, what are some of the places we've been to? We haven't actually, we've been to one castle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've been to a couple of museums. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did go to the castle in Edinburgh. Yeah, we have been to the castle. The, the, the (laughs) castle. Well, I I don't know, there seem like lots of castles. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and today we, we, in addition to seeing some really cool art, uh, in the form of a giant mecha grouse and... Some horse heads made out of razor blades and like just some really cool shit. And we've been to two of the five largest cities by population. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dundee and Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we've hit, and then we're going to hit at least Glasgow. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be in, technically Stirling is a city where we're going tomorrow, but it's not really. It thinks it's a city. It's not. <laughs> we drove, yeah, we drove past the yeah. one turn off to Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but, was, uh, no, our big highlight of today was uh, we went to an old distillery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The oldest still operating distillery in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Which was uh, Glen Turret. Glen Turret, yeah. yeah. Just outside Creef. Which we were given a lovely tour by a guy, what was his name? Michael. Michael. Michael was, was fantastic. A plus on yeah. his game for that for that thing. It, it, it is intriguing for me to wonder... How many people in Scotland work in like the tour guide? Oh, or, like, you t- tourism, industry? tourism, and whiskey are how we make our money. Yeah. I am beginning to understand. Yeah, that. tourism and whiskey are how we make our money in Scotland. It was one of those when we went when we, when we went to Edinburgh. Um, one of the things I was disappointed in was how in your face the tourism was in the section that we went to. Yeah. Um, because I've been to areas like that, and I'm, that's not the kind of travel I like to do, mm-hmm. uh, because I don't like fake culture, and I don't like kind of plastic representations of culture. So, like, everywhere you so can So the, buy... the Ryan Huckle that I met um, the other day, who was like, I want to buy all the things in these shops. I know. <laughs> a different person. That was... No, totally. He was in like, disguise. Like, you... Like, I want to go in and, and buy these things, but at the same time, like, I'm walking around, and you could tell everybody around you was, if not foreign, then at the very least a tourist, because yeah. everybody had a DSLR strapped around their neck. Edinburgh... Edinburgh... Doesn't matter what you... Oh, I suppose Edinburgh, like, as the city of Edinburgh, where I'm in a little suburb, it tends to be like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I figured, I was like, we, we may have more one time Edinburgh, and I was like, I lived there as a student. Mm-hmm. So I knew Edinburgh yeah. to live there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Edinburgh to live there is very different than Edinburgh to actually see, like, the things Edinburgh is famous for. So I was like, I figured, if we get that away first, then we can yeah. do, like, the actual, like, chill out and yeah. enjoy the, Edinburgh. The thing I remember from that place is this woman that I saw. Uh, it was right near the end of the day. And we're all tired, and we're just sort of milling around, and and she's she's coming down the street just by the World's End pub, mm-hmm. which is at the end of the old walls, of, or the beginning of the old walls of yeah, and right, right 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 by the where the gates used to be, and I've been really looking at people because I've been I've been sort of what like kind of quietly watching everybody's fashion, and sort of understanding how people dress and it's interesting people dress like radically differently in mm. in edinburgh compared to like out in the country and i think that that is partly that has more to do with rural and urban living than it does with scotland versus canada because i think you get the same sorts of patterns in canada mm-hmm. um but i noticed that she had a bag and she had, and then i realized the bag was full of groceries and she's looking kind of surly and i'm like she is just trying to get to wherever the hell she's going, and there's a shit ton of tourists in the way. And I, I live. I remember her. Yeah. I live in downtown Kitchener, um, and like, like, and I have always, like, for twenty some odd years, lived in downtown Kitchener. And I live like two blocks from where we have the second largest Oktoberfest in the world, the largest one outside of Germany, mm. and so for one week 
Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> really appreciate condensation our, on, on my our, VR. our listeners really appreciate your effort right. to, to make this just a quality program. Um I went in Scotland. Yeah. Don't podcast when drunk. No. So I live in downtown Kitchener and, and for one week out of the year, just people come from all over the world to drink beer and eat sausage and be jerks. And I honestly that week is the worst week it is to live in my neighborhood. You know, I've I have my streets filled with drunk people. I'm like walking around and there's a like a whole bunch of roads are closed. I'm really annoyed. Um, there was the time when my roommate nearly got run over by somebody who was driving down the opposite side of the street, who then proceeded to back up and lecture him about why he shouldn't be in the road while still driving on the wrong side of the road. No, that person was not British. No. They were just <laughs> drunk. See, here's the thing, though. Edinburgh... I lived in Edinburgh as a student. I was in a student. Like, our, our semester would finish at the end of May, and you would start again the end, the sort of beginning, end of August, beginning of September. And if you're a student, you don't stay in Edinburgh over the summer because August is the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah. Edinburgh like, is full of everyone in the world. Yeah, like from it's, about, it's, from, 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 from about now, though. Like, things, people are starting arriving for their, their prep, for their pre shows. I'm previews. annoyed for like two weeks out of the year. Yeah. Like, At the least, rest of the time, no one cares. Edinburgh, it seems like it's five months. Yeah, like the, the Fringe itself is about six weeks because it's like two weeks worth of like pre shows and previews. And yeah. then. The Fringe itself kicks off in August, and for the month of August, Edinburgh is full of street performers and musicians and there's theatre groups and there's improv groups and everything going on. And then, like, for, like, two weeks afterwards, everybody's dismantling everything and disappearing. And people who live in Edinburgh... I have a friend who lives in Edinburgh. He lives there all the time, and he has a, has a T-shirt. He wears it and says, I fucking live here. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just... This is from, it's just like, and, like, the Royal Mile where we were... You cannot walk up that in the fringe. You mm. have to push your way. Mm. I mean, we walk down in about t- ten minutes having a look, look at things. If we're sort of stopping for stuff, mm. it could easily take you from where we we sort of where we got the bus to not even the castle to where we where we came up from lunch. Like that little section there past the cathedral. It yeah, it's like take, four blocks. It could easily take you forty five minutes to get up there. Jeez. Yeah, and and it makes sense, but uh, like, I just I wouldn't. Like it seems like the kind of place that if I lived there, I would avoid at all costs. Mm. But don't oh, yeah, like when you live there, you don't go near the Royal Mile unless you go into the train station because you have to cross it to get to the train station. Yeah, yeah. And like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I mentioned this and I brought up you know this kind of fake tourism stuff. But like my favorite part of Edinburgh was when we were down at the World's End, um, and and Ted was pointing out like those gold bricks or those gold stones on the road denote where the wall used to be. This is where the literally the city's walls were. And if you look down the street all the way down there, which because we were tired and it was the end of the day and we had a, a, a younger child with us. Um, I, wa- I wanted to go walk all the way down there and maybe if we go back, yeah, I, might, yeah. I might get a chance to go down there. Um, I wanted to go down and check out that wall because I, I have, uh, I, I'm drawn to that kind of history. So like when, today when we went to the, to the distillery, yes, it was touristy, but it tapped into a long-standing history. Like, what do you say? The first bottles were potentially brewed in 1717. Yeah. yeah, right? Down, yeah. So, I mean, like, you're looking at what, 400 years of history. Also, they had cats. And they had cats. Um, <laughs> I got to pet cats. They yeah. were super cute kitties. Yeah, I wish I could take pictures of them, but they were sleeping inside the area that could have exploded if I had taken a picture. That's, <laughs> smartphones are solid-state devices. They don't actually cause sparks. Yeah. It's just... It's more you, you you don't take pictures and then someone from another distillery can see what they're up to. Well, also that. Game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't bu- necessarily buy it. Yeah. But, but to, to be fair, anybody from any other distillery could come in and see the stuff and yeah. walk it's, away. It's, it's more, I, I think, that, 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 that like, like in the same way that you're not supposed to use phones at gas stations. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... But yeah, I remember when they said that they're like, yeah, you know, smart, your smartphone, smartphones can spark. I'm like, there's literally nothing in my smartphone. That can <laughs> yeah. spark. That's not, that's not how they work. But I understand that yeah. while people are looking through their smartphones, they're not paying attention to what's going on, and you don't want them to fall. Yeah. yeah. But um, nit, but I mean, like nitpicking that side yeah. uh, aside, like it was it was really interesting oh, was because like their their big thing is they they create scotch the way kind of it was. 
hundred years ago. Like yeah, the slogan is "We created it by hand and by heart." Yeah, so it is. It is entirely something that is tapping into a deep history, mm-hmm. um, and it was really interesting to go through. You know, because I've been through beer tours, and I when he was describing, you know, um, they had a, an open pit where they were mixing the water with the the malted barley, and I've seen those same pits in beer or craft beer distilleries, and he was describing it as I had seen it in a vat that was covered and mixed mechanically, whereas theirs, it is open and mixed by hand with just a long, basically a long wooden spoon yeah. that you're yeah. just sitting there churning shit around. Um, it was, it was, that kind of stuff was really interesting. Or when you took us to the Tay Bridge yep. and I, so like you told me about it, um, I had seen it from finally like two or three different angles, like from uh, both sides of the river. Uh, plus, I read a little bit of the placard, and then yet your dad was still telling me about the engineering history of how yeah. they like they they expected this much mud, and then it ended up being deeper. Then they had to innovate ways of piping oxygen down because their workers were dying. Yeah, because like, they built it in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, like this stuff is so interesting, and it's. I commented today that in in Canada, like. Okay, yeah, we were colonizing, so to speak, in like the 15 and 1600s. But nothing in Canada is really that old. Go to Quebec City sometime. Quebec City is, is you know, like <laughs> some some of those, like but but those, some of the, the stuff that we see in Ontario and whatnot, like might be 100 years old. Eh, but most of the... Fort McMurray. <laughs> yeah, but like that's few and far between, and that's that's like because it was built by with stone. Like, yeah, <laughs> that stuff is still standing because <laughs> it is built similarly to Scotland, right? But often by Scots. by Scots, right? Yeah. You know, so like the stuff that we're seeing in Canada, typically, like you'll if once it stops being useful, you bulldoze it and then you just build on top of it. You raise it and, and continue on, kind of deal. Where everything here, it just goes back. Like you're stepping backwards in time, and. That kind of stuff is is deeply interesting to me, which is mm-hmm. the thing that I'm really getting a kick out of being here and, and just walking around. I want I want more of that and less you know tourist trap stuff. Yeah. Even if I want to buy all the things. We need to wander around Cooper, just let you see how my town is. Yeah, we haven't yeah. had time to do yeah, that we, yet. Yeah, it's true. That's yeah, true. Our, our, we've been to the grocery in, store. Yeah. Yeah, we we don't have our um, castle anymore because the castle did fall down. Well, it's been known to happen. It well, was the castle Macduff. Mm. Which is the castle, which is the setting for the Scottish play. Probably because... You, tre- uh, you mean... Dead, 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 dead. It's probably because the trees started to move. <laughs> is it Hamlet? Is it Hamlet? Yeah, ha- Hamlet is totally the Scottish play. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but yeah, no, our, our, my town, um, we have records from the 1200s because they were rec- recording how many people had died of the Black Plague. <laughs> but we, the town has been a market town, since, they reckon since like the 900s. Wow. So, yeah, there's been people living where I am now for that long. To be fair, um, there have been people living yeah. in, no, in our the, town for thousands of years too. We just killed a bunch of them. Yeah, there have been Scots. Like, Scots like I am living <laughs> here for that long. Mm. We, we, I mean, every once in a while in, K- in Kato we hear somebody talk about the Ashinabe, um, or as we would call them, the, the Kostoga or the Mohawk or the Iroquois. Um, but... Uh, we don't talk about them very often. On no. account of we... We didn't kill all of them, but we killed a whole bunch of them. See, we were the people, the Romans came and tried to say, right, you, we're going to listen to us now, we're building our forts, we behave, and our our reaction to that was to strip off, paint ourselves blue, and run at them yelling. Oh, mm-hmm. as, as one does. <laughs> um, the Romans didn't stay long. They didn't have guns. <laughs> but uh, all that aside, um, we have been eating a whole bunch of food mm-hmm. while we were here. Yeah, yeah. As we are mortal creatures, as I mentioned, one day we'll transcend. <laughs> but until then, um, I enjoy sampling the fries wherever I go, partly because fries are guaranteed vegetarian, um, um, almost always. Chips. Well, in America, <laughs> we had fries, and in Britain, in Scotland, now we have chips. Yeah. And uh, I am deeply enjoying the deep fried potato goodness of the <laughs> chips. Mm-hmm. I also had my first British curry today. I've had a lot of Indian curry back home. Um, there are a lot of really good Indian restaurants, but British curry is just curry sauce and a whole bunch of things that you wouldn't think go in a curry, like beans, like 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 string beans, onions, you know, peppers, tomatoes, things like that. And they're just like, yeah, here we go. Mushrooms, and just put it in a curry sauce and then dump it on rice. I'm like... 
okay. And it turned out it was really delicious. Mm, it was. Yeah, it was a good choice for dinner today. I, yeah. I agree. You had your first haggis tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it partial because it was it was Highland chicken, which is haggis stuffed inside of chicken. So I mean, I, I had a taste of it, but uh, I am looking forward to having. It with the full out. haggis yeah, well, the full haggis experience, well, we haggis can, fire we, hose, if you will. I yes. can go to the co-op in the morning and get you slices of haggis and fry them with tight scones for breakfast, if you would like. You know, if you're offering, <laughs> <laughs> I'm think, not going to stop you. Scottish hospitality, by the way, is magnificent. I can get you some black pudding as well; It'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scottish, Scottish hospitality is excellent, and I don't think that that is limited to uh, Ted and his family. <laughs> I think that um, everyone we have met here has yeah. been sort of. Really nice and hospitable and welcoming. And... That's, that's the one thing I noticed. Like I know I do it when I'm around people who are not Scottish. I do like because I lived in Edinburgh and around tourists, and I lived in Japan, and I had to slow down and speak proper English around other people. But it's amazing how like even today, like at the distillery, people in the store or whatever, like that. It was done. They just they heard your accent and went oh and just went into the their tourist world. Well, so I think because they think we're Americans and they need to say everything slower. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, but it wasn't. It was just like it was. Like even the woman on the till, the register when you were you were buying a whiskey, it was just like she immediately went, oh, and she went into like this really sort of nice cadence that you could understand her really clearly. And I just thought it was really funny that. How much whiskey would y'all like? Apart from my mother, <laughs> my mother has yet to master this. Yeah, details. <laughs> uh, so speaking of whiskey, um, you tried your first real Scottish brewed Scotch whiskey today. Yeah, I mean brewed like basically. Ten years ago to the day. It's not brewed if it's whiskey, it's distilled. Yeah. That too. Yeah, co- I beer. don't drink. It, it, I don't know anything about it's this. It's cooked at, n- <laughs> cooked at 95 degrees when they separated, uh, as we learned. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had scotch whiskey before. Mm. But uh, have you ever drank a scotch whiskey in literally the distillery in which it was made? Essentially from the cow's udder, no. <laughs> what well, I like as well is, like, as, as you was telling us today, the Glentor, you can't get it outside Scotland. Yeah, I it's, know. They, they, they're, they're, their output is so small, it's their shop and select, like, whiskey stores you can get it from. Yeah. Now, Huck has a bottle. I bought a bottle. You can trouble him for it. <laughs> I was actually, I was I was torn about buying it because I felt like I was taking a part of Scotland that I should. It's kind of like when you go to a national park and you take a rock. You know, you're not supposed to because it's supposed to be there for everybody. Yeah, but they're not going to sell you that rock for 50 bucks. No, exactly. So. And to be fair, my dad did buy you a bottle of Scottish wine today as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah. We, were gonna send, we were going to send you away with stuff where you liked it or not. Yeah. You I, came with whiskey, you leave with whiskey. I, That's I, how it works. Yeah, I think I think with the stuff your dad bought, they didn't they didn't hammer the point home that we don't export this. Whereas this one, it's like, yeah, no, we do not export this because it is such a small run and between that fact and michael being a fantastic tour guide i'm like i i, I'm, I feel like i'm only gonna drink this scotch from now on like forever <laughs> forever i'm i'm going to make a point as he said to drink sherry and scotch together to ensure that these sherry bottles are being the casks. Next, yeah sorry yeah. the casks uh the casks that well they're only to yeah. glenter it in the show yeah yeah, yeah we're gonna go seriously on seriously good uh, tour it was a really good time i'm just waiting now to get like a message from Puck, be like hey so I have about a third of a bottle left. Do you fancy coming back to Canada anytime soon? <laughs> Bring stuff in your suitcase. Can you mail it to me? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so how was it? It was so we compared um, the Glen Turret with uh, sorry what was the, the famous, famous grouse. grouse the famous grouse the most popular whiskey in Scotland. Yeah, and I I, I only forget that because the 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 taste of Glen Turret is so much superior. Yeah, but the, 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 the grouse is, the first thing is the grouse is a blended whiskey yeah. and it's kind of like an entry level cheap whiskey that people all have in bars yeah so it's, it's popular because bars buy it yeah and right. i believe when they said when michael and anyone else at the thing uh, at the distillery said that um glenn turret really i do believe them when they say it is the heart of the grouse because um it is it is so good like it was yeah. it's so smooth um glenn turret did not pay us to say this they did <laughs> not they gave ryan whiskey they did not it, it, it wasn't even that much yeah no it was uh what half a i actually shot still have some it was 12 and, half, 12 and a half around. milliliters yeah as a as a measure of, oh it's a half measure of whiskey 12 and a half milliliters yeah so basically i had the equivalent of one shot um yeah uh when we were doing the tasting portion of it um and like Michael went through and, and showed us how to how to visually inspect it and how to uh, take it in aromatically, uh, how to taste it and uh, granted you know what he could have given me any adjectives to describe the flavor and I probably would have believed him. So like if he would have told me it tastes like oak leaves, I might have believed him because 
I don't have that refined. You're of finding a that this whiskey tastes a bit like oak leaves and, and sheep shit. <laughs> well, you told us he told us it smelled like marker pens. So. Well, it yeah, did yeah, smell like markers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't know anything about drinking, and yeah. I did nose it three times. And what happened was the inside of my nose went a little numb. Yeah. <laughs> Like when he was telling us, you know, like it's it's a bit peaty, and I'm like, I have I don't have any qualia experience to understand and connect what peaty is supposed to Props refer for the to. Qualia reference. Thank though. you. Um, I, had I not been drinking, I might not have thought of that. But <laughs> but and he he showed us the difference between barley that is like kind of air dried versus barley that is um, peat smoked, peat smoked, peat smoked fire yeah. fire dried. And I, up until I'd smelled that, I did not know what the fuck. Petey what men. I usually, as far as I know, it's a it's a nickname for a guy named Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um or Peat Moss. Um but now that I have those experiences and then I tasted the grouse <laughs> versus the <laughs> turret. Okay. And like it is ridiculously good. And so I felt perfectly comfortable buying a Glen Turret and a special edition from the Sherry casks, because the Sherry casks definitely Superior to fucking American bourbon casks. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. So you've yeah. also been sort of half acidly sampling Scottish beers. <laughs> yeah, this this one's not. I, I don't have as good of an opinion on because we haven't really had a chance to sit down at a pub and no. sample. Mostly because like Ted has to drive everywhere. No, Ted hasn't got his arse to the shop to get the nice craft beer to bring back to the bar for I, a hop. Well, I don't. Want, I don't want to put this all on you. Like, the, <laughs> no, the I said I was going to do this. It's yeah, my yeah. Fault. but this, the the fact is, is like because Ted is the only person who can drive. You don't drive, and I should never drive here. I, just <laughs> drive. I am so. I, 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 I managed to drive in Canada. It's not that difficult. Well, you are a better person than me. <laughs> um, so, because Ted drives, we can't share pints together, and we can't, you know, just like... Go and I neither wild. drink nor drive. I yeah. will point out, though, when we were in the bar the other night watching the music, you asked me, like, what behind the bar is a good thing to have. And I told you things that were not good things to have, and you bought them anyway. Yeah, I bought the tennis because <laughs> it is it is like the Labatt Black Ice, um, and it's it reminded me of Doctor Who, so I thought I just had to drink it. When in Rome, drank Molson Canadian, I guess. Um, <laughs> it, it was, when it was, in Rome, have a Corona. Yeah, like Corona it, did not pay us any money to say <laughs> that either, yeah. which is probably for the best. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the beers that I have sampled, they're, they've been all right, but I'm looking forward to the craft stuff. Oh yeah, so. I have some nice stuff for you to try. Yeah, so um, I, I do not have nearly as much effusive language to give to beer as I have to Glenn well, see, we, we'll, we'll get you there we'll get you there buddy yeah. don't worry yeah, we will we um, have more time to do but in the meantime we should wrap up we should yeah, yeah. we have uh, an entire trip left to do mm-hmm. uh, which will go up uh, back on our regular schedule mm-hmm. uh, so this is, so it'll go up on August 1st and you'll get our sort of Scotland retrospective mm-hmm. uh, but until then I'm Jim I'm Ryan I'm Theo We're signing off stay awesome woo <laughs> nice yeah, we're just over 48 minutes. Nice. Perfect. Good job, team. <laughs>